Take it away. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this only seems to kind of sort of work. So uh, he tweeted out the actual link because he got the tour. I don't know. I really actually, I put these up on every presentation I've ever done. This is the first time it hasn't worked, so I'm really sorry. <laughs> Uh, my name is Lyle Pavlov. Uh, I'm the MIS director at a nonprofit called Asian Hope in Cambodia. Uh, you can find me at El Kozlov. Not the most interesting Twitter handle, but functional. Uh, a little bit about Asian Hope. We're a Christian NGO operating in Cambodia since 2001. Uh, in a single word, we do education. That means a lot of different things. Uh, essentially, we have programs for the very poor in Cambodia to the uh, significantly richer than myself, uh, like driving that thing. And from the very young, uh, our youngest kids are three, and to the not very old, but our oldest people that we educate would be parents uh, or students, so up in the 50s. So we have a lot of different <coughs> programs. But that's not really very interesting in open source conference, so I would fun. Uh, today I want to talk about the problem that we're solving. The ways that I failed and the ways that I succeeded. Um, so, why? What does my presentation title even mean? Uh, configuration management on the desktop. Why would you do that? Basically, Cambodia. The context is Cambodia is a developing nation. Uh, we have unreliable power sometimes. We have slow internet. Uh, the NGO that I work for. It's developing very rapidly. When I arrived in Cambodia six years ago, we had uh, our internet connection speed shared between 40 computers was <coughs> 512 megabit. No, not 512 megabit, 512K. Yeah, 512K. 512 megabit is awesome. So like, you couldn't even load Gmail. Uh, but since then, our fastest site now, we have 30 megabit, which is not bad. It's still shared now. It's shared now between 200 computers, so it's uh, maybe not as good as it could be, but a lot better. Um, previously, we had only a single site. Now we have five sites scattered across Phnom Penh, and at each of our sites, we have a lot of variation in budget. So our big international school has a big budget. <coughs> we have servers. We have all of the stuff that you would want. Our smaller village sites have three computers and the printer. So we have a lot of variation, and that means that like, I can't standardize, like, OK, we have the file, this file server, we have this and this and this, we have a print server. So it means that there's a lot of different variations that we need to have. So basically, like, as we've grown, I've, just, I've needed to get nimble. Like, things change. Printers break. We have new file shares. We change our strategy slightly. Stuff breaks all the time, crashes, explosions. And me as the IT manager and my assistant, the two of us, uh, we have to respond quickly. And we were not able to do that previously. So there's kind of two options. There's the DIY, uh, and it'll take, it'll take you really far. So when I first started managing uh, our classroom desktops and our labs, about 100 computers, I had some shell scripts that I wrote myself. Uh, I had a good base image <coughs> of Ubuntu and some light customization, and that that'll take me that'll take you a long way. Like you can do stuff if you need to add a printer and cups, you can get that set, and you can push it out, and it works very well. Uh, but formal tools, things like Puppet, Ansible, Solve, you know all the configuration engine. Um, you can have you can scale a lot better. So. My homegrown tools worked really well when I was physically present, but when I wasn't physically present, or if the site didn't have a DNS server, or didn't have static IPs for the, the host sites and figuring, it didn't work so well. Uh, with something like Puppet, we have we can scale out, we can operate on multiple sites, uh, we have version control, we can check in the things that we do into, uh, yeah, and we can roll back sometimes. So, yeah, we chose Puppet. So like I was saying, agent-based, uh, it's, a, it's a plus and a minus, depending on what you're trying to do. For us, it's a big plus. Because we have laptops that roam around, and because we have small sites where uh, 
like we don't necessarily have a way to jump into the site. Like we can't SSH into a neutral host and then jump into the other hosts. Agent base means that everybody comes in, checks, checks in, downloads a configuration, and we don't have to worry about configuring each site. Uh, it's really easy to any files that I modify in our base Ubuntu, we can check into version control. Uh, anything in the public manifest that I change, I can check into version control. And it just makes it a lot easier to share with my assistant and in with me what is changing and why. I'll give you a really quick example. Uh, I got some complaints from our Cambodian staff that the font, the, the rendering of the text in the Cambodian language wasn't working quite the same way than it did in Windows. So it should, because it, but Cambodians can, has uh, vowels that can appear on both sides of a central character, and then subscripts and superscripts. So it's a bit complicated. Uh, so to type some of the vowels, you have to type the left half, then the right half, and somehow they eventually come together. But ideally, you just press one and you get the whole vowel. So anyway, uh, it's. The fix is super easy, and it's in some bizarre file in some bizarre directory, and it has nothing to do with anything that I can understand. But you change it, and it works. If I didn't have version control, I would never, ever, ever remember what that file was or why I changed it. So huge, huge, huge advantage. Um, and then uh, Pub is fairly extendable. Like We can run on a single node. So me personally, I have my own Puppet manifest for my own personal configuration. So if my laptop falls in the water, then I can just check out that version of my public manifest on my new laptop, run it, and then it downloads and does reconfigure my laptop to my exacting needs. Uh, but there's also stuff like public dashboard and the inventory module. So we can see what's on each of the computers. We can get more detailed information about the last puppet runs. We can see which files were changed and how they were changed. Uh, just so I get an idea, who does anybody use Puppet now, or another version control system? Do you, you guys, a bit, a bit plus some other stuff. <laughs> does it? So if I if I say things like manifest, you guys understand. Okay. So should I explain that? Yeah. Uh, manifest it, it defines the state of your system. So the point of using uh, a version, or sorry a configuration tool like Puppet is that you can define the state of your computer and you just describe the state that you want your computer to be in. You declare it to be so and the computer handles all of the details of getting into that state. Give us one example for, to, to understand. One example? Yeah. So say I really need the uh, command line uh, tool CALSE. Do you know the specific name CALSE? Right. Yeah, so type CALSE and then a string and then it shows a picture of, here I'll show you. Now, say things. So, <laughs> uh, if it's really important for CalSafe to be installed on all of your machines, or even on your own machine, you can, or on certain machines, you can define a certain class of computers that will have CalSafe. Uh, you can, so you just try, yeah, like, you just say, how say should be installed, the agents come and check in, they download that configuration, and they say, oh, shoot, I don't have Cowsay. I'll go get it. Done. It's very, very awesome. Um, there are a few choke points. Normally, Puppet is used for servers, uh, which ideally stay up all the time, or at least like for very long periods of time. Uh, you also have an assumption that like your servers, you want to know, make sure your servers are the servers that they say they are, and you don't want hackers to come in and mess with your stuff. Uh, you don't want them to check in with another secret puppet master that gives them bad configurations. Um, and it also kind of assumes that you know the state that you want your machine to be in. Some of these assumptions don't really work in the desktop environment. Um, so, like, nodes don't necessarily stay up on your desktop environment. People shut their computers down. The 
power goes out because it's a developing nation, or sometimes class is just over. Our biggest problem is like our biggest problem with using public in this way is actually laptops. So we have a whole media center where we have about 26 laptops. So students come, they check one laptop out, they open it up, they get on Google Docs, they print the document, they close it, done. There maybe the note is up for five minutes, and during that time. It's trying to download the configuration file and make some changes, or maybe even do an auto update. Uh, huh. Yeah. So that that means that things get broken. Uh, our keys aren't necessarily well managed. We clone everything from a single image, and uh, that means that like the keys that are off the SSH keys on a machine are the same on all the machines. So that's not necessarily desirable. Um, and the state of the machine isn't always well defined. Sometimes in the desktop, like you really want the most current updates, you want security updates because your users aren't, because you have, well, because you have users. Like your users are out browsing the web, they're doing stuff, and they're they're like they're out to get your computer. So things like making sure you have an updated browser and making sure that your security updates are important, uh, but. Sometimes on the desktop, there's a lot, and there's a lot of dependencies, and you're running a lot of software, significantly more software than you'd probably be running on the server. So it's not always easy to tell of it, I want this package, this package, this package, this package, this package, this version, as such. Um, yeah, but there are solutions. Some of them good, some of them bad. So like I said, keys aren't well managed. Uh, so what I do is I actually just define the host name of the machine by the MAC address. So our base image comes up, it checks in for the first time, it sends its MAC address, and then it sets its host name by itself. So what it means is we, we clone the machine, it takes about 10 minutes, and then it checks into Puppet, gets its host name, we restart it, and then it generates a new key, which it then passes off to Puppet, which accepts it, and then things are synced up and everything's happy. Um, so I, I promised code in my um, session summary, and so this is the code. It, it was originally going to be an hour, so sorry, it's kind of sad. It didn't be code. But, um, if you want more, I have. I can give you more. Uh, like I said, the state of the machine isn't always well defined. Sometimes it's really hard to know. Like, laptop shuts down in the middle of an update. That means you have to. We can like depackage and mess everything up, and we have to reconfigure everything. <coughs> um, so this is a technique I found where you have this file. We just call it update initiator. It doesn't actually matter what's in the file, um, but what's important is this piece of code, where it does uh, app it, this upgrade whenever this file changes. So that way, I if I know that I want all of my my nodes to do an app like or a set of my nodes to do updates. Say I go in and I actually like turn on all the library laptops and I let them get on the Wi-Fi. I can change this file and then they'll start doing their updates automatically. Yeah? yeah. Skeptical? Mm -hmm. Skeptical? Can you uh, like uh, load the thing? I mean perhaps it's a bad idea to do the updates. Yes. Uh, I, more specifically, we have we actually have a local app cache, so all of the nodes are they're not actually going out to the internet; they're going to a local mirror of the repositories. Um, so I mean, it's not necessarily the best, but I have 26 laptops instead of 15,000 machines. Uh, how do you how do you update this file remotely? That was the dark point of view. Yeah. So. This this file, you'll see the source is in, it's actually inside Puppet. Right. So I just go in, I go into the Puppet Master, and I change the contents of this updated initiator file, which triggers this refresh. Which triggers the upgrade. Which triggers the upgrade. Um, yeah, this this still happens even in the best of cases, like. Nodes will shut down in the middle of updates, so there is some babysitting that happens. Uh, yeah. So, 
I'm like, I want to take questions because I think that'll be more useful than me talking a lot. But essentially, using configuration management, we now have really minimal infrastructure that can respond to changes very quickly. So if I have a request for software, or if I get a bug report, I can push the changes out to all 300 computers at five sites within a couple hours. Whereas before, I would have to actually travel to each other <coughs> and do something, or it just took a lot longer. Uh, the bad is there is still some babysitting. I don't think that there's ever going to be desktop support where there's not some hand-holding and babysitting. I, if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really do want to take questions. That's why I left a lot of time. Yeah, five minutes of questions. So, do you have any questions? Yes. Right. So, uh, in between, you said that uh, since you are copying everything from the same same image, mm -hmm. the keys are same. Yes. Keys, right. Yes. Initial. And uh, how do you manage that? Because as soon as you try to register to Puppet Master, uh, it's going to deny because Puppet CEO will hmm, because of fingerprint change. Yeah, so uh, there is a very, very not recommended way of doing things uh, where you can auto sign every key that's required. Right. So that's what we do. But on the desktop, right. it's not it's it's not such a high security environment. Um, if like if uh, if somebody gets my desktop configuration, there's not any secrets in there. Like I actually. It's a learning environment, so I want it to be as open as possible. So I really actually, I hide stuff on the file system for, for my students to find. Like, Calisa literally is installed on all of our computers. Um, just so that I can pull it up and like, be like, hey students, watch this. Control T, Calisa, you guys suck. Ha ha. And then like, <laughs> Yeah. How did you choose comments? Uh, <laughs> I wish I could say that I like did a really good job of like comparing them all. It was Puppet had an open source version uh, at the time that I chose it. Ansible was still fairly immature. Uh, Salt was fairly immature, and Puppet had a lot just had a lot of resources. Um, and then I, I had toyed. I, I liked the idea of having paid support. At that point, Ansible didn't have any paid support. It was just like a community project. So I didn't really like delve in and like really seek out like the best. Honestly, I, I'm at this point I'm considering switching over to Ansible because I think that the way I have things configured now, it may be better for us. Um, but yeah, it's definitely developing. Yeah, I don't I'm not from Puppet, I just need Puppet. <laughs> if you do think towards moving to Ansible. How do you propose to do agent based? You can answer the yeah. traditional doesn't have that agent sort of functionality. Well, actually, some, somebody at a session this morning was saying that they use the Ansible in kind of an interesting way where they would have each uh, <coughs> of their nodes uh, go and get a configuration file, so the global configuration file, and then run it locally themselves. Okay. So, so puppet style. Puppet, sti puppet style of like Ansible. Um, and I thought that was actually. Then it means that even if you don't know the entire, don't need the entire configuration, you are still going to download the entire, uh, all the, uh, whatever the data there is, all the files of the configuration, which you might actually not need. Yeah, that's true. But uh, if you, maybe if you had it checked into a Git repository, then you don't need to download the changes. The, <coughs> I don't know. I, it's, it was, somebody said something about it this morning, and it's. Yeah, I imagine. So yeah, it's all kind of the Git repository. So git pool, you just be down with the div, and the div is probably zipped up, so it's pretty small. So, unless you install binary files, then get any of your screw anyway. So. Well, actually, I, I can tell a small story about that. Uh, binary files are a big problem for us. Um, we, have, we do have need of Windows XP every so often, so uh, I have a Windows XP image that I needed to distribute to plus clients, and Puppet doesn't do that well, and our network doesn't do that well. Um, so actually, I wrote a Puppet module to uh, install <coughs> transmission CLI, grab a torrent file, and then all of the nodes torrented it from each other, 
and I was able nice. to distribute the entire uh, four gigabyte image in the time that it took one node to download. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it was really cool, actually. It's the same strategy that Facebook use to deploy their apps. Really? Yeah. Okay. Do you use a puppet model environment besides the Linux? No, no. Uh, Windows works fairly good. You can bring some promotional stuff. You can call it Zip. No, I, I haven't. I haven't really. We we have zero Mac. Uh, the Windows machines we have are very limited. We have our front office staff. So there's three in the front office of one of our sites. We have one Windows machine, sort of like a token Windows machine, in each of our sites, and then four more for our admin staff. So t total number of Windows machines out of our 300 is like about 10. So it, those ones I just kind of submit to the suffering. <laughs> I think I'm out of time. I'm actually over time. Mm. It's actually okay on time. Really? It's at 3.50. Yeah. It's 3.52 now. Oh, it's okay. Any other questions for Lyle? Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming. I really thought you were